done it a time or two. Okay. Red tide has attacked the Florida coast. You feel like you want to vomit. Killing off a generation of sea life. It looks like a turtle. I think it's a big loggerhead. It's sad we're getting this good at ID floating piles of goo. But it's not just red tide. Blue green algae from Lake Okeechobee is making people sick. He coughs up blood once, we're out. While communities away from the coast say they aren't to blame. They get on Facebook, they get on social media, they trash us, they bash us, and they think we're the problem. These dual catastrophes are happening more often and lasting longer. This is our legacy? Seriously? We can't come up with a better way of living on the planet? When do you think you'll be able to fish again? Hopefully in the next five years. In the next five years? Nope. You don't think you'll be able to fish before then? Well, we could still fish in our canal, but I have to wear masks and stuff. I turn down every job. I will not get in this water under any conditions. We're destroying absolutely intentionally everything we need to exist. Every business, indirectly or directly, is related to the water. Sanibel Island is a vacation destination known for its white sand beaches and wildlife. But this summer, this area of Florida's Gulf Coast experienced dramatic outbreaks of red tide and blue-green algae that crippled businesses and sickened residents. The water, our livelihood, our animals, our health, our sea life, our children, our pets, all suffering. We want to get some numbers from a regular guy. Keep in mind, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a fisherman, okay? Since June 1st, 71 charters, $31,000, gone. For Lee County, one out of four jobs is tourism related. So if you lost that, you're gonna lose at least 25% of your economy. And that's devastating. In my 40 years of living and working here, this is by far the most stressful because it's, we've got this double whammy of a, a freshwater, toxic algae bloom, meeting up with a Gulf saltwater toxic red tide bloom. Red tide events are caused by a microscopic organism common in the Gulf of Mexico, but the deadly blooms typically only last a few months. How long has the red tide been impacting this area? So the red tide actually started in October of 2017, Whew. but depending on how the wind shifts and the currents bring it, uh, it really got bad in July and August. Which means this red tide bloom has been going on for over a year. And it's so bad, it's spread to both the Panhandle and the east coast of Florida. And red tide produces, among other things, brevitoxin, which attacks the nervous system of wildlife and humans. The result? A massive die-off of marine wildlife. Over the last couple days, our winds have shifted back from the west, so we're getting all this west wind, which is pushing a lot of the stuff that's probably been floating out there for a few days up to the beach. We've had two dead turtles, a dead manatee, and a dead dolphin I all mean, before I left my house this morning. How does, I mean, it make you feel you research these things, you study these things, and this is the state you see it in? I mean, it's always hard. You know, none of us do this because we want to see dead animals, but we try to do the best we can and learn as much as we can from all of these guys so that we can hopefully help the ones that are still out there. Blue-green algae, or cyanobacteria, starts in a different place, far inland at Lake Okeechobee. It finds its way to the coast when lake water, rich in the bacteria and the fertilizer and nutrients needed for the bacteria, is released down the Caloosahatchee River in order to protect farmland and towns near the lake from flooding in a hurricane. Which is worse? Which of the two uh, Pick your poison. is worse? I'm going with the algae. The red tide is devastating everything, and it's terrible. Um, but I think from a human perspective, uh, you know, where we're living on the water here, the cyanobacteria is, is something we have to address. The blue-green algae becomes six-inch thick mats of rancid sludge along the canals and the coast. It also produces toxins that can cause skin irritation and trouble breathing, but has long-term effects that are far more sinister. Yeah, because it's a hepatotoxin, so you'd have liver damage and kidney damage. Your liver can recover, so if you're a healthy person, as long as you don't get a fatal dose, 
you will recover. The research shows climate change is not only making these twin disasters on Florida's Gulf Coast more frequent, but bigger and badder. With Hurricane Irma and the tropical disturbance before then that brought in so much fresh water and probably a lot of nutrients and and you know raw organic matter that was so even though it's been almost a year now those resources could be available still for red, red tide to utilize and that might be one reason why it's persisting and has been intense well the climate's changing it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter if you don't see that you're crazy i lived my whole life here it has gotten hotter whoa and that's just adding fuel to the fire sure. to both red tide and cyanobacteria things are changing and you just can't stick your hand or you stick your head in the sands and ignore it. We're going to have to deal with these impacts one way or the other. You can say that red tide and, and the cyanobacteria are natural um, organisms, but the scope and the size that we're seeing is being fueled by, by man. Two years ago, I reported on the devastating impacts this toxic algae is having on the east coast of Florida. And while I did find thick blue-green algae at the lake, the residents of Clewiston and other towns around Lake Okeechobee have strong opinions about that. But it's not, it's not what the media has been portraying. We're not a toxic lake. I have never seen any thick guacamole algae as they've showed in B-roll from the east and west coast. That's not a fair analogy or explanation of what Lake Okeechobee is. Over the years, we've heard a lot of people say a lot of things about Lake Okeechobee. We've heard, you know, take their land, blow up the levee, uh, just flood the communities, you know, and, or send it south. You know, and when we hear all that, we almost feel like those are just um, words that are being used to destroy our community. You know, I would say everybody should be a little bit mad at whatever the solution is and say it's not fair because that way you you addressed everybody. You know, you just can't blame one group or, or displace one group. Everybody's got to give a little bit, you know. And so the residents of two sets of communities worry and blame each other for what they see as a very real threat to their way of life. But this past summer, the risk to places like Sanibel Island was impossible to ignore. Jim, what does it feel like when you breathe this in? Like whenever you walk out your front door. You feel like you want to vomit. I can't use the backyard, can't use the pool, can't use, you know, don't think about it, even going out on a boat, forget that. If it's all dead, yeah, I think you will see people moving away if it's not the beautiful environment that they came down here for. Are you talking about selling your house and going might back? Might have to, uh, it might have to, but how are you going to sell it? <laughs> Who's going to buy a property now? I mean, I put my life savings into everything to come down here to, to live the dream.